Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today I'm going to talk about the Hi-Fi-Men Edition XS. Per popular request, by the way, I've teased this headphone in a few uh, videos in the past, but I've been asked about this headphone for months. Um, I've had a lot of great headphones and headsets sent to me lately, so um, it kind of got delayed a little bit, but I've been really excited to talk about this one because of what it represents and what you can get at this price point. So with that being said, this is a $500 headphone. It uses an open back planar magnetic design. I'll talk about what that means. Um, and it's basically, I think the goal of this product from hi is to kind of give you a taste of how good audiophile headphones can be, but at a somewhat attainable price point. I understand $500 is a bit expensive for a lot of people. However, when you start hearing the technical performance of this and what it can do to your music and games, because I do get asked about this for games, um, this is a remarkable headphone. Um, so I want to talk about the basics. Let's start with what you get in the box. Now, the older hi fi -Man products, a lot of hi fi -Man products will come in a, a either a more premium looking box or, you know, even the Sandara, which is a less expensive headphone um, by about $200, comes in a nicer looking box and it has this nice little, you know, shiny fabric inside, like the silk fabric. Um, it's... I think what they're doing now is going a little bit more economical. You have a brown box, better for the environment. The styrofoam packaging actually doubles as a headphone stand, which is why I have it on this. And the headphone stand is tall enough where you can leave the cable plugged in uh, and let it hang. So um, do I use this headphone stand? Typically, no, but I think uh, as your collection grows or if you don't want to buy anything extra, it lets you do just that. Now, for those of you who don't know what an open back planar magnetic headphone means, I'm going to start with something cool, and that is the fact that you can see light go through it. This is a fairly transparent speaker. Now there are some planar magnetics that you can't do that trick to, uh, but the idea of a planar magnetic is just a different way of producing sound. You think of a dynamic driver, a traditional headphone driver or speaker driver where you have the cone, the rubber surround and the speaker moves back and forth. With a planar magnetic, you have a, like a nanometer thick diaphragm, which is basically what's producing the sound that's suspended between uh, two sets of magnets in this case. It's almost like a magnet sandwich. What happens is the current flows through this very large planar magnetic transducer um, and that electrical current attracts or de repels, I guess, against uh, the magnets on both sides. Now I mentioned stealth magnets. hi fi -Man has uh, different magnet technology. They've been pretty much making most of their new headphones with this. The idea of the stealth magnets is to be as transparent as possible to the music. It does affect the sound uh, a little bit uh, compared to their older stuff, but there's so many variables in that between pads and dampening material, it's hard to know how much of a difference these stealth magnets are making. Either way, it's a pretty unique approach and the end result of a plan R is they kind of have their own unique sound compared to a dynamic, which you may be used to. So I'll talk about the sound performance after, but I did want to bring that up just in case. Now, as far as specs go, this is an interesting one. So this is an 18 ohm headphone, but a 92 decibel sensitivity rating. So um, a lot of people see the 18 ohm and assume it's a piece of cake to drive. And then when you take into account the sensitivity rating, it's actually comparable to much higher impedance headphones with higher sensitivity rating because you can't look at one number by itself. They both need to be considered for how loud these can go on an amp. So um, with the lower sensitivity, in my opinion, these can still get loud enough in, in a lot of cases for people, like even on a, an inexpensive uh, dongle, like a USB uh, DAC, like $20 DAC headphone amp, it'll still play fine. However, the Edition XS actually scales uh, pretty well with higher end amp and DAC equipment. So I'll talk about the source gear uh, later in the review, but this will get comparably loud to something like a, a Sennheiser HD 560S, which has 120 ohm sensitivity or impedance, I should say, uh, but with a much higher sensitivity. So um, it's playable, it'll get loud, however, I think you actually get bigger benefits on this headphone from upgrading your source gear. So you may want to consider that, um, which again, I'll bring up later. As far as build quality, comfort, and design goes, it's an interesting headphone. So this is using the hi fi Deva style headband. It debuted on the Deva, which is a $300 uh, headphone from hi fi -Man. Um, there's pros and cons. I like the fact that it has adjustable yokes so you can scale to different head sizes. There's a little bit of swivel now, which is great because the Sundara, which is less expensive, even though I like the headband more in the Sundara with the suspension strap kind of disappears on your head, this gives you the ability to have this kind of pivot and rotate just to fit your head shape a little bit better. Um, the pads are absolutely massive on this because these have larger drivers. 
unlike the Sandara, which is less expensive, this is kind of like your first entry into the much larger teardrop style uh, headphone design. And as far as looks go, that's always gonna be subjective. So I'm not gonna spend too much time there, but these have the look of a more extreme audiophile headphone. It doesn't look like your traditional, you know, circle with plastic cup or even a wooden cup, for example. Um, build quality, mine's actually been pretty good. What was really weird is when I first got it, the first two days in of listening, this is like over a month ago, um, I had a couple little squeaks. One of the forks would squeak a little bit whenever I adjusted it and it went away. It's never been back since. I've, I've been using it for almost a month now, like off and on, and the squeak never came back. So um, your mileage may vary. I think I've had a lot of products where they have interesting characteristics and it's not always consistent, but overall it feels pretty solid. You have, again, the metal mounting point and it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart on me. Not a big twist type headband, but that's fine. It still feels solid and once it's on, it's never made any noise. Now, as far as comfort goes, um, it's different. So I mentioned the headband being a little bit more stiff. You kind of have a couple hard points. It doesn't center the hard point on the center of your head. I felt more the pressure on like two points. That's obviously likely due to my head shape. Um, but, and just to disclosure, I've had to say this apparently lately, I don't wear my hat when I do critical listening. It's just for the review. I'm just wearing the hat for the video, so please don't suspect that this is the only way I'm demoing things. Just throwing that out there. Um, I found that uh, when I have this on the smallest setting, it sounds or feels like just right to me. So if you have a smaller head, this may feel like the ear pads, instead of being centered, they might feel like they're hanging just a little bit lower than you would have liked. I think that's my only critique. I hope that in the future, they might be they might modify this headband to be like, I don't know, a full centimeter shorter. That way you can actually start utilizing this telescoping yoke because the ear cups are absolutely massive and that does change the way you perceive the sound and hear it because sound is coming from above and below your ear, which is one of the advantages this has over the smaller, less expensive Hyphaman products. Now, as far as the other interesting quirks go with comfort, the uh, pads are a little bit more firm than something like the Aria Stealth. So when I first put them on, they don't feel that they, I don't feel like they compress as much as the Aria Stealth, which is more like a pillow. This is more uh, firm, which I was concerned would lead to long-term comfort issues. However, that never happened because of the material being the leatherette outside and that softer, almost like a sport fabric uh, lining that touches your ear, um, these stayed feeling the same over long periods of time. I didn't have any pressure points or hot spots that negatively affected my comfort. Um, it's interesting because when I first put the Sandara on, I liked the Sandara feel more. It felt like it fit my ears just perfectly. However, over time, I felt like I had to adjust it once in a while. And with the XS, it didn't feel as great at first, but I never felt like I had to reposition it or fix it. So um, it's kind of like you sit in a more firm chair that ends up being comfortable for a long time versus a really comfy soft chair or couch when you first sit in it, but you're moving around. It's kind of like that. It's again, it's an interesting and different take on comfort in my opinion at $500, but I could still wear these for a long period of time and not have any issues. Now, as far as sound quality goes, there's a few ways to look at it. You have uh, your subjective and objective side, you know, what you like and taste. And from a measured standpoint or the objective side, it actually measures pretty well. It's a little bit different than some other high feminine products. Um, it doesn't have the sub bass roll off found on as much of like the Sundara or even the Ananda, which is a much more expensive. It's almost double the price effectively. It's a thousand dollar headphone. This has better bass extension in the sub bass region. So it's not like it's boosted or overly emphasized, but it does extend into that range. And then on the other side of the spectrum, when you get into your upper mid range, this is a signature sound uh, tuning characteristic from Hyphaman. Now to what degree and what spikes is varies obviously between each headphone, but the XS, um, once you get past about 1K or the 1000 Hertz mark, there's a little bit of a recess. It's kind of scooped out and then it ramps back up to the 3K region and then your 3K is just a tad over the Harman curve, 3K by comparison. Um, but overall, it didn't seem overly sharp or shouty in that region. It was done fairly well. And when you compare it to something like the Sandara, which came across a little bit more harsh, even though measurably that 3K peak wasn't as high, I found this still to be more tolerable and easier to listen to and enjoy music on. The rest of the treble tuning, when you get into the higher frequencies, you kind of have your, your dips and rises. The most noticeable thing with the XS is a 12 kilohertz peak. 
um, which you can EQ down if that's an issue. However, I strongly suggest trying it first because depending on what you listen to, you might like that extra sparkle up top. Now that tuning in the upper mid range and treble region does obviously affect the sound and it did change things a little bit on male vocals for me. So if you have a higher pitched male vocal, for example, that tuning thins it out just a little bit more than what I'm used to on like my reference and benchmark headphones or even my speakers uh, that I listen to. So it's just an interesting way of presenting the music. Now you can EQ some of this and you still get a lot of the benefits of the XS, which I'll talk about in a second here. Um, but that scoop is part of what's creating that sense of space and soundstage. It's kind of like the signature tuning that Hyphaman does to create this vast imaging and soundstage. It's just a byproduct of that. So you may find that you like that tuning out of the box for everything. You may want to tweak it a little bit, but that is at least the philosophy behind it. Now, I found the detail retrieval to be excellent. That's no surprise considering uh, how good even the Sundara was a detail retrieval at 300. This honestly takes it to another level. And this is a good representation of, of scale, but also diminishing returns because the Sundara was great at 300 and it beats a lot of other headphones in that price range. And then when you step up to the XS, you're like, holy crap, I didn't know that $200 could translate into this level of improvement. And in my opinion, it is noticeable even from 300 to 500. The next noticeable improvement from here though, is stepping up into the much more expensive Aria Stealth, which is uh, $1,600. So over three times the price retail, and those are giving you a little bit more sense of separation and detail and airiness up top. But overall, they uh, sonically sound somewhat similar. You get the Aria Stealth if you just want a little bit better separation um, and, and a sense of space. Now these still image incredibly well. I think the sound stage is excellent. In fact, it's better than most other headphones in this price range period, both above and below. Um, and, and then when it came to music, so the flat bass extension, this is an emphasized bass. It's weird because when you look at a measured uh, frequency response chart of the XS, it doesn't measure with boosted bass. It's not like overly emphasized, it's freaking flat. It's like a table. And what's cool about it is it extends all the way in the 20 Hertz region. Um, they rate this to have some insanely wide frequency response, like five to 40 K. Um, but it's noticeable with some tracks and it kind of sneaks up on you. So um, the bass is very well textured. There's a lot of unique ways of presenting the bass. It's not like a one hit wonder. And you may not, you may want more of the sense of punch and slam and kick and all that stuff that you often hear thrown around. It's not a hard hitting headphone because this is an open back planar. Closed back dynamics typically give you more of a sense of punch. However, um, I found that this was still doing most songs justice, including rock music. I still enjoy listening to stuff like Tool and it absolutely screamed. And I found it very easy to listen to even for long periods at a time. Now, as far as the way this presents music, uh, I just wanna highlight again this whole teardrop shape. This means that the music's coming from above and below your ear, not just the center point. And that does create a unique sense of space uh, and audio. It's just, it's not coming at you straight in the center of your ear. You know, if you compare it to an in-ear monitor, an IEM versus a larger open back, you get a much greater sense of space, obviously not to the level of a speaker in a room. However, the difference is apparent. And then this kind of takes that up one more notch because the sound isn't just coming at a center point of your pinna, it's coming above and below, which is utilizing your entire ear and it's interacting with your head in a different and unique way. That's really a huge selling point over the Sundara to me even beyond frequency response measurements, is you can't beat the physical uh, impact that a speaker or a headphone of this size has on your sound. Now, there are a lot of headphones to compare this to when you start approaching the $500 range. So I picked some of my favorites, um, and I wanna mention these. I do have a Meze 109 Pro coming in soon, which is closer to $900. Not really a fair fight, but this is uh, a surprising contender to much more expensive headphones, which is why I brought out the Aria Stealth. So you have the HD 560S, actually surprising amount of bass extension in the lower frequencies, a little bit more forward, and I don't wanna say grainy, but um, almost, it can be a little harsh to some people in the upper mid range because it, it's emphasized there. Um, it's really one of those things where it just depends on, you know, what kind of audio production you like. It doesn't have the same sense of detail retrieval or even soundstage uh, as this, of course, but the imaging is actually quite nice. And for under $200, um, it's, it's great for music as far as bang for your buck, and it actually does a decent job for gaming as well. Now you get the HD6XX, 
$200 headphone, mass drop. They also make the uh, Sennheiser HD 650, which is very similar. The HD 600, which is similar, but slightly less warmth to it. Uh, the 6XX 650 600, that is like your timbre king in the mid range. So if you want as natural of a music presentation as possible, those are known for that. They are like a staple under $500. And to a lot of people, that's all they need. Now with the HD 6XX falls flat, and I'm saying that because that's the one I have, is you losing a, a bit of sub bass. The bass isn't excited and the treble is more laid back as well. This is a fairly warm, neutral, unexciting headphone, but that doesn't mean it sounds bad. It's just a matter of preference. Some people like a little bit more bass or deeper bass or a little bit more sparkly, you know, treble region. So it's again, one of those things where your preferences may vary. I do like it. I think the biggest drawback to me with the 6XX is how intimate and closed it sounds, even for an open back. It's not terrible, but there is a massive improvement in soundstage when you get to any of the other Hyphaman products. So if that's important to you, then that takes you into the Hyphaman Sundara. The Sundara is interesting. It doesn't have a rotating ear cup. I mentioned that earlier. Instead, the revised model has different pads to help contour and fit your ear. Um, I, I love the Sundaras. I was using them for a long time. They're very comfortable. However, again, the sound stage is a little bit more narrow compared to these two. The bass extension isn't quite as deep, but I found that the uh, upper mid-range and treble to, again, similar to the 560S, it has a little bit more of a harsh, almost nasally characteristic to it. You can EQ it and fix some of that, and it does respond extremely well to EQ. However, you're still hampered by the physical uh, limitations of a smaller planetic, planar magnetic driver. So, again, I think I touched on this earlier. The biggest difference with the Aria Stealth is the sense of separation and detail retrieval. The soundstage is better on this for sure. It sounds even more grand, which is surprising because of how open and great these sound. This is like a planar magnetic version of the Sennheiser HD 800S, which is like the soundstage king. Well, if you wanted planar magnetic characteristics as far as like really fast transient speeds, almost plucky sounding, like very, very fast. As soon as it produces a note, it's instant and then it decays very quickly as well. So as soon as that note is supposed to stop, it's not ringing out. That's the characteristic of planars like this. Um, but for 500 versus 1600, it's really just giving you a little bit more separation and detail retrieval, but you're bang for your buck. This isn't over three times better sounding. So what's cool about the Edition XS is this is giving you a taste of like extreme audiophile products without going broke. Um, and I really want to commend them on pulling off this level of technical performance at 500. It has to be one of the best $500 headphones you can buy. The question mark is, is if you want to invest the source gear to get the most of it. So I tried a lot of source gear and I'll be honest, um, the XS scales really well. It responds very well to higher powered amplification and you know, several amps have their own pros and cons. You're not just getting something with a volume knob. So you wanna make sure that whatever you're picking has the feature set you want. I think that's more important than just straight up worrying about an extra 0.2 watts of our, uh, power output. If you're using this for gaming and you do something like the Antlion Mod Mic, get something like the Shit Hell 2. This is also a really nice way to juice up your PlayStation 5 if you're using it for that. I found that I could game on this with controller playing a game like Call of Duty and there was no issues. This is just that extra juice that greatly benefits the access because it does, you get you do get closer to max volume uh, on the controller. The JDS Labs Atom Stack, the shit uh, Magni Modi Stack, $200, 220 bucks, um, gets you honestly like 95% of all this needs. It sounds incredible for the price, but to me, it is a very important consideration. I don't know if I would get just the XS and no source gear. So to me, this kind of represents what you really want to consider for getting the most out of this investment. Otherwise, why are you spending this much on headphones if you're not properly um, powering them. The topping 830D30 uh, Pro stack, the iFi Zencan signature, which actually has a Hi-Fi Man preset button on the signature edition. That changes the EQ a little bit. Um, you can always do custom EQ later, but this kind of takes that, uh, I don't want to say necessity, but it's their own interpretation of custom EQ. So if you want a different flair on a physical level, that's a nice little button to have. That comes in handy if you're using it for listening to a turntable or a CD, for example. The mono price, this is basically an unaltered, just take the signal in and amplify it, very clean sound, $300 uh, for the amp, 
but you want to at least get like a cheap Apple dongle to connect it to your computer because that'll clean up the signal. And that's just if you want it's extreme power and not necessarily an improved deck. The HiFiMan EF400, it's a $600, $600 amp deck. I love that one. That's the one I use the most for testing. It's a blast to listen to and use. I love the chassis because it has a USB-C port in the back so I can just plug it into my computer and go. But you know, when it comes down to it, just strongly consider a slightly better amp and DAC than just plugging into a computer or a phone. It just, it sounds good on that, but you get way more volume capability, which I think it needs a little bit extra juice to kind of fully wake up the headphone and you are rewarded with incredible sound detail all without punishing your ears. Now I've been asked this a lot, so here it is. As far as gaming performance goes, this is freaking insane. Uh, it has a great balance of a strong EQ, like a not overly fatiguing, overly bright, punishing EQ, immense detail retrieval, which is great if you want to hear the subtle details of the game's audio mix, whether it's footsteps in the distance, rustling trees on an open world game, etc. But the soundstage is very wide while also still being great at imaging because they are not the same. Imaging is your ability to identify um, how exactly how far left or right something is. You know, is it there's like you have the whole zero 90 degree. Well, what about the 30 degree? Can you pinpoint that? And these do an exceptional job, like as about as good as it gets as far as imaging performance goes. And then your sound stage is your perception of how far those objects are. The XX to me represents about as good as you'd ever need on gaming before. I mean, really, let's be real. If you have a headphone that's turned up loud enough, it's not going to make you a better player necessarily. It might sound better, be more comfortable, better for music. But um, if you're just looking for cream of the crop, you get very quick diminishing returns when you get into high-end audio for gaming. The XS is basically your all-around performer for both music, gaming, without having a drawback, honestly, in either one. So that about wraps up this extremely long review. I think the Edition XS is arguably your best bang for your buck, or one of the best bang for your buck headphones on the market, period. Um, it has just immense detail retrieval. The comfort and build quality, you know, that's more of a uh, personal opinion and how it fits your head. But when it comes to technical performance and the ability to reproduce music in a somewhat unique but incredible way, a memorable way, the XS excels there. It really is astonishing how much closer this is to much more expensive headphones than it is the gap from less expensive stuff. It's, it's crazy what you can get these days. And the XS really is like the gateway drug into the ultimate end game audiophile world. So um, with that being said, I hope you found the review helpful. Big thanks to hi -Fi Men. They did send this to me for review. It doesn't affect what I say about it. I'm sure if you've watched other reviews on this, you're gonna start seeing a theme here as far as how much uh, people like it. But anyway, thank you again. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I'll see you next time.